Hi, why am I sitting in my car in a shopping centre car park? Well, there's a very good reason for it. It's because uh, the other month I tweeted a photo of a sign that they had just put up in the shopping centre car park. And I'd never seen this before, even though it's quite common in different uh, places around the world. But I saw this sign that says, um, basically, if you take one of the shopping trolleys out of the car park the wheels on them will lock and i posted a photo of the uh wheels and uh, some people actually um said oh yeah we've had these those things for decades in their various shopping center but anyway this was a new thing for me so i was interested curious about uh, this technology and somebody actually um offered to send one they had one of these uh self-locking wheels um and they offered to send one in so i got it and i thought we'd take a look at it because it's a real problem take a look at this you know here's all the here's all the uh shopping carts there they're all sort of just you know i find them in the dumpster room i find them scattered around the neighborhood and uh things like that there you know people take these things uh like just out of uh the shopping center car park and they often like will walk to the shopping center they'll take their groceries home and then they'll just in the shopping trolley and then they'll just dump it and this is like a real huge problem apparently it costs like you know many hundreds of dollars or something uh in in a lost trolley if uh you can't recover it and i actually have uh fond memories as a kid of actually uh going around on the john deere tractor they used to have this tractor that then pulled one of the uh shopping trolley uh collection cart things and they'd go around uh not only the huge uh, shopping center car park but they'd go in the streets and everything collecting all of these shopping trolleys because they're worth serious money so they go out and find them and have to bring them back and all this is major cost hence why uh some companies have developed these um self-locking wheel things to try and take them out but it doesn't really stop people taking them out um anyway we'll go into uh details of this but i thought we'd do a teardown of uh and maybe some measurements of these shopping trolley self-locking wheels this could be really interesting stick around and there it is wheels lock beyond this point so they've got uh what they've got is actually uh coils in the uh road here as you can uh see as the cars go past um they've uh, cut these uh coils in there and it's a magnetic uh loop based system and you can see that they're uh got them actually uh cut into there and but you can uh, get shopping trolleys out um other ways via the footpaths and things like that so it doesn't really work but anyway i thought we'd uh, check it out so big thanks to the viewer who uh, sent this one in and I have uh, checked it. It does seem to be identical to the one uh, used in my local supermarket. So it's from uh, Gatekeeper Systems. There's two plugs on there. Well, uh, is that like a connector um, interface or something like that? Perhaps we'll uh, find out. But uh, it looks like we can take it easily apart with uh, screws. This one has had a fair bit of use there. And this one doesn't seem to be locked because I can turn that. So... Yep, both directions, no wackers. So let's whip this thing apart and see what's inside. There's going to be like some sort of, you know, solenoid uh, lock-in mechanism or something like that. And of course, the, uh, there's going to be a battery inside there, so it'll be like a latching uh, solenoid so that it doesn't uh, take power, of course, when it's uh, completely on. Otherwise, if it like switched on and had to take, uh, had to energize the uh, uh, solenoid coil from the battery, it'd eventually die and then it'd come good again. So... So the first thing is, what's inside these? Oh, there we go. Um, uh, hello? Uh, nothing. Uh, that's weird. Okay. And uh, nothing again. No, there's no hidden contacts in there or anything like that. So what's, what's the deal? So these are just uh, self-tappers. They're obviously not designed to uh, come apart. Long-term, you know, a long-life uh, lithium battery. Lithium primary, I would uh, suspect. And of course, there'll be some form of uh, big induction coil in here, because that's obviously how that they're uh, triggering these things. If you ride over the coil, it's not just going to fall apart. Percussive maintenance required. Time to get medieval on its ass. Yeah, is this rubber's not bonded. Here we go, I'm getting somewhere. Yeah, it looks like it's going to eventually prise up. There we go. Really stiff, hard rubber it's not it's not quite a plastic kind of a rubbery polymerized plastic compoundy thing i don't know 
Got no idea. But anyway, yeah, as I said, this one is not locked. This one will still spin. So presumably, um, if I take it down there and uh, pass it over the coil, it could actually lock, assuming that it's uh, still functional, of course. Real solid monolithic block. Wow, but it looks like the top cover comes off. And of course, these things uh, have to be completely weatherproof as well. You know, they're permanently sealed at the factory. I did just uh, have a thought of what these little plugs could be. Um, there could be like little uh, comms coils behind there and uh, because they're sealed so you might uh, come up because they have different colors there's a reason that they have different uh, colored plugs like this you know because you want to be able to uh, reset these things of course yeah you uh, take off the plug and maybe that just allows you and then you just plug in there which has the coil behind it and that just accurately aligns and couples um, through to um, inside perhaps so yeah that'd be my guess because it is all uh Hermetically sealed and this sucker seems completely Glued uh, shut. Okay. I won't use the Dremel. I'll just hack away at it And uh, yes, this is uh, the front cover for a scope. Ah makes a great try Yeah, it's looking like it's uh, bonded at Several points in here. So it ain't pretty. Aha. Now we're starting to crack this puppy open. Look at this. And we're in like Flynn. Well, I haven't got the rest of it out yet, but anyway, we can see that uh, the whole entire inner part rotates. I didn't uh, expect that. That's interesting. Yeah, so it was somehow glued in. I don't know, it was a real pain to really get it off. It was a lot of effort, that's for sure. Anyway, so this thing is, is supposed to eventually lock. Let's, does this drop out? Ah, it just drops out. There you go. There's our battery. What are they? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Where's our big induction coil? It must be like I expected like a, a big uh, induction coil around it. This is this is really fascinating. Looks like that entire inner section is sealed. There's no screws and then this outer part. Aha, that's how it locks I suspect. What happens is see these ridges in here like it's it's normally freely rotating like that but it looks like this, when it activates, is going, it either, this lever, I suspect, is going to go to one side and push out and expand this outer plastic. And you can see how the plastic is going to get stopped if it expands out and with these little ridges. There's no way that it can, it's just going to stop the whole wheel from rotating like that. So that's interesting. That's different to what I, uh, kind of expected so that's fascinating so I think that's what's going to happen there because this can only move to one side and if that does that you can see how this is going to like expand out it's designed to come apart like that that must be how it locks and then no surprises for finding uh, dual o-ring seals either side here that's to stop the uh, water ingress um, dual o-ring seals is uh, quite common with uh, myself coming from the marine uh, underwater background, um, yeah, very common. Anyway, there's lots of uh, science that goes into uh, O-rings, if you don't know, and getting the pressure right and the surfaces right and all sorts of uh, stuff. And, and no O-ring is going to be waterproof unless you actually grease it up either. Like, you know, nylon uh, type inserts in there. And uh, I just had a little washer there and uh, that just yeah prevents water getting into this but even this even if it does get inside here this looks like it's a complete hermetically sealed package wow I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna have to dremel this one apart as well this is insane wow I expected something easier than this anyway I think what's uh, happening here is we're probably gonna have a mo this will be our uh, lithium primary battery this will be our motor You'll have some sort of like gear reduction, uh, you know, torque uh, mechanism in there. There's a screw in there, some sort of lead screw kind of thing. So once it's triggered, it'll uh, turn the motor. It'll, you know, do a couple hundred revolutions or whatever it needs to do um, to turn the lead screw. And then that will somehow push. Does that go through there? Although I can't see a hole in there. It's a bit weird. Anyway, that'll push on this which will then separate these and lock the wheel it's rather clever i guess is that a plug in there perhaps <laughs> they've really gone to town on this unbelievable
What happens here? Ah, that's going to lift out of there, is it? And... Ah, there we go. Plugs out. And yeah, there's our cog down in there, as suspected. Gear reduction mechanism. Okay, again, I think they've uh, glued that top plate on there. So, once again, you don't have to get medieval on its ass. And, yep, a little bit of Dremel action there. And, uh, I can start to crack this puppy open. I'll try not to damage anything, but can't promise it. So that, ultimately, wasn't too hard. Oh, there we go. A bit fancy-pantsy. Ooh, see an antenna. Wow, that's not a, uh... That's not a loop. I was expecting like a low frequency, like a like hundreds and hundreds of turns of like a low frequency uh, magnetic loop in here. Once again, we've got access to the PCB, but uh, check it out. There's our motor in there. We've got some Celastic in there. Somebody had fun. There you go. So they gunked all that up. Programming port there for the micro. So there's a motor under there. Wow, it's all ridiculously sealed. And that's going to be our lithium primary battery. I can guarantee you that's a lithium primary. But that's all we've got. Wow, I don't see any magnetic coil. I mean, you could just do it with a, like a small inductor if you were pumping out enough. Because that's like Bluetoothy type. Well, that's a TI CC2510. It's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. That is a uh, 8051 micro with embedded um, 2.4 gig. RF in there, hence why the antennas there. Um, uh, like, they're... what? Okay, uh, everything everyone uh, told me about these uh, systems and uh, a few of the things that I looked at were, yeah, these are like magnetic loop based systems, like low frequency stuff, um, as you'd expect, like buried in the ground. Uh, you'd expect them to be a magnetic loop based system so i don't see anything it got an external crystal here we got some uh trannies over here that'd be for driving the motor so probably like a half bridge for uh for driving the motor perhaps um a few more trannies over here a whole bunch of stuff over here these two pins over here the battery wires are buggering off up there somewhere so is that maybe in there perhaps they have a magnetic loop and it's uh, just like got a discrete uh, tranny gain stage there or something like that. What's that jobby? Is that a voltage regulator or a uh, little uh, uh, 5 pin SOT 23 op amp perhaps? Alright, so assuming that this is going to be a magnetic loop based interface here, this makes sense because look, this then is a uh, parallel resistor to ground there then a cap and it goes into a bunch of trannies here, so that's some sort of uh, discrete amplifier. So yeah, I'd say that's got to be the magnetic loop interface. And then just for other comms, uh, shop owners would uh, be supplied though as part of the system so that they could uh, reset, lock or unlock the uh, wheels. So maybe I'll find some info on that. And take the board out. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> There's the inductor on the back there. So, yeah, after nothing uh, special. So all they need is just an ordinary inductor there with, you know, enough turns to uh, pick up the magnetic uh, signal from the loop. And Bob's your uncle. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom there. Code, as I said, like the code to turn this off and on could come via the RF interface, but of course out in the uh, field you don't want that because these things are buried under the ground. So you've got to have like a magnetic uh, loop based system. Otherwise, um, you know, if it was an electromagnetic uh, signal, then it's, you know, it's not going to penetrate the uh, ground. So you need magnetic loop. Uh, based system at uh, low frequency and that's what you're going to get with the coil there so that's just a you know a multi-stage uh, discrete amplifier uh, front end for it you know has this thing got any encoding at all on it or, or whether or not it just sends out like a fixed like five kilohertz signal or something maybe i should actually put like a coil near this and just uh, sweep it and see what happens so let's just check this uh battery here i'd expect it to be good because it's going to, that micro is going to take naff all, and uh, yep, oh, they're almost 3.1 volts there, so that is still, this is still good to go. I mean, uh, with a large capacity uh, lithium primary battery, battery like that, this thing is going to last like the shelf life of the battery. You're going to get uh, 5 or 10 years operation of this thing, assuming that the motor doesn't uh, drive, of course, when you drive the uh, motor to lock or unlock uh, this thing, then that's obviously going to take uh, significant current 
from the battery, but if it's just like in standby, yeah, um, you probably get the shelf life of this battery. These uh, micro runs are the sniff of an oily rag. Totally crude, but I am probably not going to be effective, but I'll give it a go anyway. I'll start from 500 hertz. Okay, 100 hertz increments. Nine kilohertz. Nope, either encoded and or it's not high amplitude enough. Ah, worth a shot. Now, I know this is crude as, but I'm going to go out there and uh, try and actually detect the signal from this thing. What I've got is a pair of uh, headphones here that I'm actually using as an external microphone input to my Zoom H1 uh, recorder here. Going to set it for uh, 96 kilohertz, 24-bit recording. And of course, uh, speakers you can actually use as electrodynamic microphones that's you know essentially what they are um because you can see uh, like when i uh, talk into it you can see i'm actually and if i put more well, if i touch it there we go we're, we're going to max out on that so you know like it's crude but should be good enough for australia let's go so i'm out here at night and uh, just to get the ambient noise down and it does seem to be working <laughs> beauty so there you have it, our crude ass Aussie dynamic microphone actually did the business and we picked up the signal. It's not perfect, but we can definitely use this to analyze and possibly replay uh, this as well. You can see there's bursts in here and we'll, so it's basically chirping like like twice or three times as twice a second, something like that. Here it is. Chirp, 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 chirp. Nice. And if we actually zoom in on one of those packets, there you go, it's actually encoded and it looks like um this could be like a start is a start bit like one two three four five six seven eight we've got so a start bit eight data bits one stop bit by the looks of it and it looks like the length of it here is determines whether it's a one or a zero so it looks like you know it's take your pick either way but you can see that there are like let's assume that this is a zero and then we've got four ones and then possibly three zeros like that and then now stop it and that's just easy for any uh you know, the mic onboard micro to uh interpret that and then if you zoom in closer to here you'll find that this is just a single frequency there there you go that's the uh, sample and that's a 96 kilohertz uh sample rate there but they're all basically it the frequency does not change so what what we can do now is actually um just analyze this and have a look at the spectrum plot Ta-da! and there's our peak right there 7714 hertz that is terrific there you go. And uh, yeah, the, these are just little um, uh, harmonics out here. Don't worry about that. So yeah, it's just that one fundamental frequency and the length of it uh, determines um, the uh, packet, essentially. And it looks like it's exactly the same uh, packet every time. Yeah, it's just going lock, 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 lock. So obviously there'll be an unlock command as well. Presumably, unless it's uh, only done via the RF interface, which I doubt. I think you can actually uh, do it via the induction. Beauty. And there you go. If we just plot the spectrum of just the one burst there, it looks like that's peaking at uh, 7,953 hertz there. And it's amazing what you find on the FCC website uh, because when they get this EMC tested, of course, they have to get it uh, FCC uh, compliant and all the stuff is on here. Turns out it's a very old design. In fact, we didn't even have to do a teardown because the internal photos are all here. Here we go. Here's all the internal photos. Does that look? That's different. That's different to our one. Yeah, that's a different design. So this is an older design. But anyway, this shows you. Um, there you go. That's the lithium CR123 lithium primary. I think might have a, a bigger one in here now. But anyway, yeah, the motor, the gear reduction mechanism, very similar sort of thing. And um, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, FCC is a good uh, website to do. It looks like it used exactly the same thing. Yeah, it was basically back in the uh, 2000s.
So this was actually back in 2007, so it's a pretty old uh, design. They've obviously um, updated it uh, since then, but you know, here's the confidentiality letter, the cover letter internal for MPE calculations, the test report for it, and anti-drug abuse and authorization letter. Ah, America. So there's tons of stuff there, including the actual uh, training manual. And here's the cart key thing. This is what uh, the shopping center would get. And uh, yeah, it just lock, unlock. And it uh, it tells you like to bring it towards it. So it does, I think it does use the RF uh, system. So yeah, copyright uh, 2007. So I'll link to all this uh, down below. We won't actually go uh, through the whole thing, but it's very comprehensive. It's a hundred page manual. It tells you how to like install it. Installation philosophy with the photos and everything. It's really exit manager, um, stuff like that. It really is quite uh, remarkable, the detail that they've gone into. I'm not sure if this is available on the website. And here's how you might typically like lay out a uh, shopping center car park. You go around the perimeter of the car park. But as I said, like it's so easy to get trolleys out of these. They're, they're just everywhere. They're littered of them. Just driving uh, out there tonight. Like there's... Oh, there were dozens and dozens of trolleys outside the area, and I'm sure all the wheels are fine. All the ones I find in the uh, dumpster room, because people use uh, go borrow the shopping trolley to um, take stuff down from their office to dump in the dumpster room. I find stuff in like actually in trolleys. Very convenient. I can just trolley it up to the lab. You know, it's not nice, but yeah, you just go out via um, the footpath or whatever. It's not it's not rocket science, but anyway. And here it is. They tell you how to uh, saw cut. Uh, the grooves in there and place the um, <laughs> place the uh, cable in there. They even tell you what uh, ty type of cable to actually uh, use as well. They've got like data sheets. So there's the transmitter circuit board. There it is. <laughs> it's everything. It's all in here. So it's it's fantastic. I love it. Here we go. How to solder the splice installation photos. <laughs> scotch coat sealer and you know put the heat shrink and here you go here's how to dig the trenches and here's how to seal them back geez that's a bit how you're doing um that one but you know that one looks okay once you clean it up <laughs> they've gone to town really <laughs> that's the corking gun to seal it all up <laughs> fantastic <laughs> quick greet <laughs> fantastic and there you go, how it paint big yellow lines. They haven't done that at our uh, car park. It's it's more subtle than that. You just don't know. They've just got the uh, sign there, but yeah. <laughs> we've got flow charts and we've got everything. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Here you go. Here's the material specification sheets, the, uh, the cable for those playing along at home for all you cable aficionados. There you go, the belt and twisted pair cable. Ah, oh, great stuff. Gatekeeper Systems Loss Prevention with a focus on your shopper's experience. Yeah, the experience is everything. Cart retention, all sorts of things. Push out prevention, it's called. There you go. That's the industry term. Push out and cart analysis. They support 47 of the 50 largest retailers in the world. Wow, I guess they're at Walmart and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the average push out theft is 560 bucks. That's what it costs to either uh, replace the trolley or go out and find them and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's actually preventing all that to, trying to protect it. But ultimately, these things, like, they, they they don't work. Like, people are just going to... It doesn't stop you pushing them. Even if the wheel locks up, you just, like, just drag it. It, it doesn't, like... It's only one wheel. They don't do all four wheels. It's only... Or let us know down below if uh, what they do at your shopping centre. But the ones here, it's only on one wheel. So whoop de doo What's that going to do? All right, now that we've got the recording on here, I'm going to plug the same headphones instead of the mic in. I'm going to plug them into the headphone out and see if we can play back this signal and actually get this thing to lock. Fingers crossed. I, like, I don't know if it's going to have enough power. Like, I may have to amplify it, put it through a, a larger speaker or, or some sort of coil. Um, but anyway, give it a bowl. All right, here we go. Nope. Obviously not. It's not close enough. It's not good enough. Let's try the speaker on the end. No, not good enough. Wah, 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 wah. Nope. Okay, let's try an external power amp and a bigger speaker. But uh, <laughs> we need a bigger boat. But uh, yeah, I think ultimately uh, we're going to need a coil to do this. Like as in not a speaker coil, but a just a regular coil. Here we go. Okay, let's just try a direct connection. 
around that. Still nothing. Nope. Zippity doo da. Increase the level. Wah, 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 wah. Worth a shot. But anyway, uh, the point of all this is that you could uh, potentially replay that signal because <laughs> it's pretty simple and uh, do some nice social, fun social engineering, perhaps. Not that I recommend that, but you know, it could be fun. So there you go. I hope you found that as fascinating as I did. <laughs> this thing just popped up randomly in my local shopping center. I wonder, how does that work? Now we know. <laughs> terrific stuff so if you like that video please give it a big thumbs up as always comment down below and subscribe on my library channel i'm like oh i'm gonna get to ten thousand, like real ten thousand subscribers really shortly it's just going nuts so yeah check that out down below the forum all the usual stuff you know nah catch you next time <laughs>